This is part of my premium course, so if you like this video, be sure to check out usefullaravelpackages.com. Okay, let's take a look at the Laravel debug bar. This package shows you useful information about your app, so you can debug and optimize it. This package has been around for as long as I can remember, and it is the first thing I install whenever I build any real Laravel application that's meant to go to production. So I have a demo app here, as always. So let's go ahead and install Debug Bar and take a look at some of its features. So make sure you require it for development only. So let's go ahead and compose and require it. And now it will be available if app debug is set to true. And if you go back to our app and refresh, we'll see the de debug bar down here. So let's go ahead and expand this and take a look at some of its options. So for messages, it allows you to log messages here instead of using die and dump or dump. So if you go here, check out right here, we can just do debug bar info or error or warning or add message. We'll just stick with info or if you want, you can use the others. So let's go into our code and let's just add one in here in the home route. And we can debug objects or just messages. And now this will appear in here instead of in your app. So yeah, if you don't want to use die and dump or dump for debugging as that can stop your app from running and interfere with the view, you can just use this if you want. Like I said, there's one for error as well. It will just display a bit differently here. Or you can also put an object in there. So let's grab the user. So I have users in my database already. And let's just put user here. And just put user here. Okay. And there's the information about the user. You can expand it as you expect. Okay, let's move on to the next tab here, which is timeline. As you can see, it has some information about the time it takes to boot your app here. But if you want to measure your own stats, you can do that here. So if you go down here, we can just wrap our code in start measure and stop measure. And in between is whatever you want to measure. So say for example, we wanted to measure this, we can, and then we can stop it. So for this one, so it's measuring how long this takes and we can change the name of it say get user time for getting user and then you can see that appear in this timeline there we go so if you're not sure if something is taking long to process in your application then definitely make use of this so let's do an extra example here let's do all users here and let me just get rid of this and we'll just do user all here and let's make more users here what's this complaining about okay so i'm just going to make a whole bunch of users here so let's do factory app user let's say 3000 and do create and I forgot to close the quote. And this error happens because Faker is using the same email, but this j did generate a few records. Let's see how many there are. Six sixty nine. Okay, that's not enough. Let me do this again. Okay, so this time it didn't run into an error there. So let's see how many there are. Okay, so now this should take much longer because there's more records in the database. So let's see if this, this is reflected in here. There we go, it's much longer. Okay, let's take a look at exceptions here. Pretty straightforward, you can just log your exceptions in this tab. So I have a route prepared here called exception and it just throws a new exception and it catches it. And here we're just logging it to the debug bar. 
So let's hit that route slash exception. And there it is right there. Cool. All right, let's take a look at views here. So you can see some information about the current view. So right now we are on the default welcome blade.php and there are no variables being passed. But if you go to one of the other ones, so I have the auth scaffolding set up here, you'll see that there are two entries in here. One is for the actual view and one is for the layout here. You can see their paths here. And for the layout, you can see the parameters being passed in. So we have four and here are their names. So I have one more route here called posts and it just lists out all the posts. So if you want to see that, I have a post controller and here we're just getting all the posts and then I have a posts blade and we are just looping over them and rendering out the title and the user. And if we go back into the post controller, let's actually pass something else in here. Let's say foo bar and let's refresh this and you'll see Oops, let's just pass in a string here. And now you'll see two parameters being passed. It should be posts and foo. Cool. Okay, let's take a look at routes here. Pretty straightforward, just all the information about the current route. So we have the URI, which is posts. We have any middleware being applied. We have the controller that's being hit. We have the namespace for the controller. And if there was a prefix, it would show here. And this is the route name and the file. So pretty straightforward. Just some useful information about the route. All right, let's take a look at queries here, which is what I used this package most for. So you can see the number of queries being ran on this specific request. And it also shows in the tab here. So this is the way I detect n plus one query issues just whenever this number is looking higher than normal, then I would just inspect the queries that are being ran. So in this case, I intentionally have an N plus one query issue, and you can see there are 101 queries being executed here. And it's probably also good to mention these stats over here. So here is the memory usage for this specific page. And you can see it's a bit higher than normal. You should take note of what an average request looks like. So around four, at least on my machine. And this is, and this one is nine because we have this one big query that's getting all the users. So it makes sense that the memory usage is higher here on this page. But in general, when it's a normal page, it's somewhere around four. But back to our posts page, that's pretty high as well. It's not that high, but you can see it's higher than normal at 6.4. You should also keep note of the request duration here which is again, higher than normal. Again, if you go here, you'll see it's 27, 59. The main page should be a bit higher because again, we're grabbing a bunch of users, but yeah, keep an eye on those metrics. So if you look at our post controller here, you'll see I'm just grabbing all the posts and then in our posts blade, you'll see that I have a comment here. We're just grabbing the user of the post or the creator of the post and then outputting their name. And obviously I have a relationship between posts and, and users. So a user has many posts and a post belongs to a user, but I am not eager loading that. So we are getting that N plus one query issue, which like I said, the bug bar makes easy to spot if you're paying attention. So to fix that, just eager load with users here and this should reduce the queries down to just two. Cool. And you saw the request duration go down and also the memory usage. So yeah, definitely make use of the queries tab and these other metrics as well. Okay. The mail tab just shows any mailables that you're making use of. So I have a route here for mailables or mail right here. And I just have a generic order shipped mailable here. So let's run that mail. 
and you can see here order shipped it's sent to this person at this email okay let's I'll go back to gate in a second look at session here pretty straightforward all the information about the current session so I believe I have some stuff in here actually it's in my post controller so I'm just gonna grab these two right here and let's put it up here in the post index so I'm just gonna put a key in the session called key with a value of value and I'm also gonna flash a message here called success message and that's the value of it and these two should appear in here now that they're in the session so if I go to posts there we go key value and success message so yeah anything you want to inspect in the session you can just use this tab here the request is pretty straightforward everything about the request content type headers attributes and so on and so forth you can see in this tab and let's take a look at gate so if you make use of Laravel's gates or policies this is where you can see that information so right now I don't have any so let's make one quickly so we can just run this command sorry not that one what's it called php arson make policy i believe okay so that made a new policy here and let's quickly just use one of those policies so post policy and i'll make use of the view any rule and it's going to return let's say true for now Actually, let's return false. And to make use of this policy, there's several ways to do it, but I'm gonna do it on the route here. And you can see I have this commented out here. So let's add this to the post index route. And now this should fail because we don't have access, it's returning false. There we go, cool, you can see it here. But actually, I think this is going to fail if, if we put true to because we're not logged in. We have to be logged in for this to work. So yeah, still forbidden. You can see that right there. But if we log in, this should work. So I need to look at one of my users here. Let's just grab this person. And I believe the default password is password. Okay. So now the post route should work and you can sh you can see that in the gate command. There we go, cool. So yeah, if you need to debug your gates or your policies, just make use of this tab here. So yeah, these are all the default tabs, but I forgot to mention that there's actually more. If you publish to the config, there's options for more here. So if we do this, we'll get a config. So it's config debug bar. So let's take a look at that. Okay, and if you scroll down a bit, you'll see all the other options here are set to false. So for example, if you want the auth information of the logged in user, we can set that to true and we'll see that show up in debug bar. So there it is here, I think. If it's too long, it starts to show icons and my resolution is pretty low right now. So it's showing icons, but auth should be somewhere here. Right here. And we can just see information about the logged in user. What else is there? If you want to view all the events that are firing in your app, you can use events here. And this one is events, I believe there's all the events that are being fired. Cool. So yeah, take a look at the rest of these if there's anything else you want to debug. And definitely make use of this package if you're building any real Laravel app that's meant to go to production.